Hi everybody, greetings from Helsinki and welcome to this postmortem of Rival Peak. Uh, I'll cover a little bit about myself and Genvid Technologies. I'll talk about massive interactive live events or miles. And then I'll jump into Rival Peak, a multi-million dollar collaboration we had with Facebook, Pipework Studios, and DJ2 Entertainment. Now, what we're doing is new and is often confused with other trends. So I want to start by saying what Genvid is not. And that is we are not a streamer tool. Rather, we work with developers to create viewer-centric and viewer-interactive experiences. We are not cloud computing. We are native cloud streaming. Uh, and we scale more cheaply than multiplayer servers. And we are not a platform. We are not competing with Twitch. We, um, we're a preferred Twitch partner, um, but we're a platform agnostic. We have games on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. And all these platforms have different audiences. And we feel it's important for developers to choose the platform that best fits their game. So my name is Christopher Hamilton. I'm the Director of Developer Relations in Europe for Genvid Technologies. And Genvid was founded in 2016 by some Square Enix veterans. It is a US-based startup with offices in New York, Montreal, LA, Tokyo, and Berlin. Uh, the company is backed by some leading games VCs like Galaxy Interactive and Makers Fund. And we have people from both of these funds on our board. And we have amazing advisors like X Square Enix CEO Yichiwata, digital media executive Matt Ball, Anna Sweet, uh, who was instrumental in building Valve and Steam into what they are today, and JT Gleason, who was at Twitch for more than eight years in, in both partner and developer relations. And our mission is to power the future of interactive media. We believe that people love shared experiences, particularly when their participation matters. So be it gaming, sports, or reality TV, these are the events that end up being those water cooler moments in the office, or these days, just what people are chatting about in the random channel on Slack. Um, we're already working with top tier platforms, leagues, and events um, to create these experiences. Now, interactivity is the future of mass media content, and massive interactive live events, or what we call miles, are the next step in this evolution, turning passive viewers into active participants. So we seek to disrupt the traditional broadcast experience by offering increased interactivity and a better viewing experience for the widest possible audience. Miles are cloud-powered, highly engaging, and interactive live broadcast events that allow anyone to be part of a large audience while directly participating in a meaningful way. So Miles combine the best of lean forward gaming, lean back TV, and the thrill of live entertainment. Now here the audience will matter and the individual can decide their own level of involvement or influence. Miles can be decide, designed in a number of different formats or combine multiple styles that best fit the specific events. And with that, I'll, I'll move on to Rival Peak. Um, on December 2nd, Facebook debuted a new unique interactive reality show called Rival Peak, and it got a lot of attention from both industry insiders and the general media. Uh, and with that, I'll start with a quick overview of some statistics and then explain some of the elements in more detail. So the project ran from December 2nd to March 3rd, uh, with more than 100 million minutes being watched. Um, now that represents 55 times the amount of minutes watched from week one to week 13. And perhaps this is not the best indicator since Facebook didn't really start marketing the game until week three, um, just because we were testing for stability and bugs and, and this sort of thing. But you can still see a significant jump between week four and week 13. Uh, and there were a number of different types of interactions that the audience could engage with. You can see that most people engaged with the storyline by reading dialogues, but they also took part in events by voting on various things that impacted the story as it unfolded. Um, project power-ups, match three games, memory games were other audience participation events and ways that viewers could participate. Uh, we added things to help gamify the experience as the weeks progressed. So we added a, achievements in the leaderboard uh, and this helped us sort of nudge um, viewers into interacting with a um, other AI contestants uh, in the game, as opposed to focusing on just one. Um, if they had a fan favorite, we created these tribute challenges so that they could really 
um, go all in on certain games to really support um, a character of their choice. And at GenVid, we're a big believer in maps and and creating um, an experience that allows the viewer to understand really what's happening and, and give them sort of a tactical and strategic understanding of what's happening. And that's perhaps more important in other games than this one, but we wanted to have viewers understand kind of where the characters were and uh, give them a better understanding of the world that these characters were moving around in. Here are some basic demographics. Um, top five countries were the United States, Mexico, Brazil, India, and the Philippines. Um, and the experience is very much like a very casual game. This is what Facebook wanted. They wanted sort of a, um, a fishbowl type experience. Um, but because it was so casual, I was rather surprised that men edged out women in terms of audience. Uh, and I was also personally surprised that so few people are using Facebook on PC these days. Um, with that, I'll, I'll jump in and explain a little more, a little bit about more Rival Peak, a little bit about more about Rival Peak itself. Um, Rival Peak is powered by Genvid Technologies with design and creative support by Pipeworks Studios and G DJ2 Entertainment. And while Rival Peak looks like a game, it is a culmination of a decade's uh, effort to create the world's first native cloud streaming experience. Rival Peak isn't a game, rather it is a massive interactive live event or mile. Um, Rival Peak is built on the idea that interactive stories should be based around the entire audience and not just a single viewer. That your, decision, your decisions should have consequences to you and to the entire audience. Um, that there are no do-overs, there's no pausing, there's no way of understanding who's going to win. Um, and during its 12-week run, the world of Rival Peak never stopped. Its characters were constantly in motion, and the story unfolded as the audience participated and played along. Now, Facebook lacks an extension program like Twitch, but it does have the world's leading HTML5 platform. So we work very closely with Facebook Gaming to use an HTML5 video player to put the live stream from our tech into 13 different Facebook instant games, link them all together, and then reach Facebook's 2 billion users around the world instantly. Nothing to download or install, and it works very well on low-end Android devices that are normally a pain for any development team to support. So this experience was highly accessible. Genvid, we are pioneers in, in miles. Um, we're the leaders in both the technology and services required to run Rival Peak. So we acted as the showrunners for all of the components of this mile responsible for the design and deliveries. And we had teams running 24 seven to handle QA, marketing pushes, new updates to the Facebook feed, customer support to respond to user issues and a live operations team ready to push new code when bugs occurred. And as a mile, Rival Peak is made up of three components. Um, the Facebook Instant Game, which is actually 13 Instant Games all linked together. And that is one for each um, AI character's stream and the main home stream. Um, it is a persistent world. And, and this part of the, the mile is similar to the reality show Big Brother, where the audience can watch and follow what all the contestants are doing 24-7. Um, the contestants are driven by a very sophisticated AI that was developed by Pipework Studios. And all the voting takes place through audience participation events, or APES, um, which are various user interactions um, that I'll touch on later in the demo. But um, can, the contestant with the lowest score at the end of the week is eliminated. So the audience votes by engaging with the, the instant game or the individual stream of the particular AI character. And the more they engage with those AI characters, the more points they get. So the more people that engage with a specific character, the less likely they are to be eliminated. Um, the second part is Rival Speak. Um, and that was a, a Facebook Watch original companion show that was hosted by Will Wheaton that guides the audience deeper into the world, deeper into its secrets and its characters. And this show is actually much more like Lost with a very complex storyline filled with conspiracy theories and total craziness dreamed up by the team at DJ2 Entertainment. Uh, the narrative serves as the experience's metagame, um, and it's more than just a weekly wrap-up show of what happened. Will um, interviews the AI contestants to provide more of their background. He sets up the story for the following week. And again, Will and the producers do not know who is getting eliminated week by week. Um, so it was a truly crazy production schedule that I will also touch on a bit later. 
And then the third component is Facebook as the social platform itself. Um, with the Rival Peak page and several fan pages um, that provided additional information and ways for the audience to follow what is happening and get more information on the contestants and the world and the storyline. Um, and it used to be that people would live tweet their reactions to premium shows like Game of Thrones and here it is happening all right on Facebook's platform. So before I jump into the demo, I want to get you up to speed with what's happening in the sim, um, which is challenging uh, because it's like trying to summarize several seasons of Lost in a few minutes or 30 seconds. So um, when Rival Peak began on December 2nd, it looked very much like a digital animated reality TV show. There were 12 AI contestants. They all had different backgrounds. They were fighting to survive in the Pacific Northwest. And then things started to get weird. <laughs> Jeb, he's the big guy in the back that sort of looks like a lumberjack, saw a haunted floating axe in the camp. Um, Antonio started to have strange dreams. Then maybe all the contestants were having the same strange dream. Um, the audience, through their participation, helped the contestants traverse the map, only to have the group split by a landslide. Um, they ran through haunted woods. They discovered a secret bunker. Um, and then they were forced into a sort of a post-apocalyptic wasteland by a mudslide. Um, the fans, the audience, quickly pieced together that there was a lot of strangeness uh, perhaps too much coordination, and that maybe the mysterious Tangram Labs, the so-called sponsors of this Rival Peak reality show competition, that Tangram Labs might have more sinister motives. Um, at the midpoint, uh, which was week six, and originally this was January 20th, um, all the eliminated characters came back into the bunker, uh, which is pictured here. Um, they are on a side quest of sorts, separately helping us, the audience, try to unravel the mystery behind Rival Peak and Tangram Labs. Um, they were eliminated. They can't win, but they're back. And I will touch on this a little bit later as well. Um, let's jump into the demo. Uh, the sim, as we call it, is currently running in rerun mode. Um, and we're actually approaching the end of the story. Uh, so this is um, Facebook uh, loading everything. Again, um, fairly instant. And this is sort of the main page. Uh, I'll just quickly run you through kind of what's available here. This is sort of a message of the day pop up to guide people that are in the experience. This, if I was properly logged into Facebook, uh, would give me a daily multiplier. Um, you can see if I tap on my face here, um, these are my favorite characters of the contestants that I have been um, following and contributing the most by engaging with them through various activities. Um, the achievements and leaderboards that we saw earlier, um, again, just various ways to encourage and nudge players to interact with the different characters and, and engage in different things. Wow, we can see in this mainstream that uh, one of the characters has been possessed um, again, the storyline is a little bit uh, off the rails. Um, settings, uh, it's available in eFigs. Um, you'll notice that the sound effects are turned completely off. Um, this is in part because all of the 12 characters um, and the 12 characters are kind of here across the bottom. They all have different soundtracks. Uh, they're all quite cool um, to listen to. I particularly like Winter because um, she has this cool kind of electronic music that's either upbeat or kind of low. Um, cool stuff to happen and, and, and yeah, I would just like to get her points and I would often listen to her in the background. Um, we made all the cutscenes that um, major things would happen. People would watch the cutscenes. We made them all available just to uh, help people understand the progression of the storyline as well as a direct link to the um, Facebook Watch Rival Speak um, episodes. Uh, we added a direct link to that because this um, we felt we needed to sort of interlink the different parts of the mile more directly. Um, you can kind of tell from these photos that um, this totally, the storyline totally goes off the rails. I mean, even if you don't interact with the instant game, um, this is worth a watch for sure. Um, Dialogues are sort of a key thing. Because I'm on the main page now, these are all of the dialogues for all of the characters. This is a recap for people that sort of join late and want to get caught up on everything. Um, and then there's the map that we added later. 
um, that allows us to understand that um, nine of the players are here. They've kind of gotten out of the bunker and they're in this abandoned um, mountaineer settlement um, versus zone four where the three remaining characters are. And I guess they're in the um, petrified woods area. Um, and with that, I will jump to Winter's screen. She's got some stuff going on. Um, close this. This is uh, Winter's screen. Um, and she's working on an action uh, ape. She's building a campfire. If I just tap here, um, I can help speed up her progress on building this campfire. Um, and again, this is exactly the kind of interaction that Facebook wanted. They wanted people to sort of jump in, get involved with certain things, help out certain characters through voting, um, but not so much that they would get engaged and play for a long time or play for hours. Facebook wants you to kind of um, tune in and then tune out because they want you to get in the cycle of, of coming back. Um, this is a daily vote, um, which I already voted in, but it's uh, who does La Portia tell her, tell about her favela, um, origins, um, and I had selected several one earlier, um, and now she's engaged. I guess she's just getting getting warm by the fire, which I can also help speed up. Um, and I will be curious to see if I can find um, another character that's that's. Uh... Let's go to Sabon. Sabon's probably also getting warm, and I should jump to somebody else. Yeah, he also has this uh, action uh, ape of getting warm. Let's jump to Karen and see what Karen's doing. Um, often characters, ah, good choice. So often characters are trying to figure out what they are going to do next. Um, and they will often be sort of standing on the side with a, hmm, what should I be doing next here? And we don't really see Karen here, but um, let's see. She can store water, work on a project, or get exercise. Exercise will probably keep her warm. Um, she's hit, hit a lot of her goals for today, but we'll hit vote and play. Um, I go into this matching game, um, which allows me to um, just kind of vote or, or do a memory uh, pairs type thing um, and eventually uh, clear the board, get some points. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, well, it matters in the sense that it, it gets points and it, it has my involvement. Um, but we're just waiting for uh, the goal to be decided. Um, and Karen will kind of go off. And, and this is a way for the viewers to vote and impact what the characters are doing, um, how they reach their goals, uh, and, and this type of thing. So um, you've got Project Apes, uh, which are actually bigger than this. And, and it's usually something like building a raft or maybe building a bridge. And that involves all of the different characters getting together and you kind of have to jump from character to character to make sure that they collect all the things they need um, for these particular things. Uh, two seconds to go. Let's see how the voting goes here. Um, another 13 seconds. Uh, we'll see what the choices are. And um, she's off to go to exercise because I had selected the the correct um, goal. Um, I actually get bonus points for that. And once what's her action eight now? I guess she's just getting exercise. I can help speed that up. But again, uh, very light touch stuff. Um, and then voting through through actions and, and other implements to sort of drive the story forward. And again, this is a, a rerun of uh, everything that's going on. And that more or less covers the game. So I'll jump back into the presentation, put this back into full screen mode here. Um, so Stephen Bagage, uh, he's the creative director of DJ2 Entertainment, and he's known for his narrative work on several telltale games, such as the Tales of the Borderland and the Walking Dead season two. Um, and he said that what we're doing with Rival Peak represents an evolution in narrative creation. Um, this goes way beyond dialogue tree manipulation, where players are voting on dialogue choices. Um, players are interacting with the physical evolution of what these characters are doing. Um, and that, in turn, influences how they move about in the world, which in turn influences the dialogue. 
So you're not directly voting on who's going to say what. You're influencing the characters as they pass through the world, and then that influences the story. Um, and he added that it was an interesting challenge making the Rival Speak video on demand show because the deadlines were tight and it was complex. They didn't know who was getting eliminated, so they needed to create a framework um, for the story that would allow them to take into account how characters were eliminated. Um, and they came up with some clever tricks in order to per effectively preserve some dialogues um, even after characters were eliminated. So um, having all those characters, having the eliminated characters end up in the bunker um, allowed them to reuse dialogues between any two characters that were in the bunker that otherwise would have been eliminated from the storyline. Um, and a lot of that dialogue needed to be adapted to fit the current storyline, but ultimately it could be reused. Um, and so that was just a, a quick hack to um, help uh, keep the whole dialogue going. Um, and although we knew what some of Rival Speak's segments would be in advance, we did not know who was going to get eliminated um, each week um, because obviously this was all determined by user engagement. Um, so as a result, we had to rapidly change the dialogue, the scenes, the animations um, to release the Rival Speak episode each week. Um, so a typical week had a lot of changes based on user interactions. User scores were counted Saturday to Friday. Uh, and then there was a cutoff for the upcoming episode. Friday evenings gave us the weekend to adjust everything. Um, Will was shot on Mondays, and the production and editing took place on Tuesdays. Then on Wednesday, the instant game would go into sort of a brief downtime um, that would allow them to upload the next week's worth of content, and an episode of Rival Speak would air um, exactly at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, followed by new streams up at 6.30 p.m. Um, we had QA and marketing teams working 24-7 to respond to user issues, post new content on the character pages, and ensure that streams were up and, and healthy. We had a 24-hour 7 live operation team that would fix streams if anything went wrong, um, or push new code to the instant game if we had a bug. Um, I remember there was one issue where um, AI, for whatever reason, um, rather it got stuck on a wolf and was following the wolf around for 20 minutes and then... Um, they were able to fix that and resync it to a uh, character. So miles are new, um, and the Rival Peak tech stack is rather unique, and it was a technical challenge to build um, in this global pandemic. Um, as such, we held off on marketing for the first few weeks so that we could do bug testing, learn, and adjust. Um, we also needed, a, we knew, we understood that we needed to more clearly explain to new users what they should be doing. Um, many of the new Users discover Rival Peak uh, through the live streams, um, which sit on top of the Rival Peak page. And the live streams were originally a, a clean feed meant to be watched inside the instant game. Um, but without the instant game's UI, um, that main stream became super confusing. People thought they needed to interact with it rather than it being sort of the land homepage to, to, to sort of cycle through different players and understand what was going on. So within a few days from launch, we created a, a, a lower third dialogue that you see here on the left, kind of explaining what was happening that week. And we understood after a while that this still wasn't clear enough. So we changed um, to the more CNBC-like banner on the right with an explanation of how to get to the instant game um, and sort of what was happening um, with this week's events and, and more information. We thought it was going to be enough uh, interactivity for the audience to engage with these uh, AI characters. And for most fans, it, it actually was. But many people still wanted to interact with real humans as well. There's sort of something about uh, live um, interaction that makes it more engaging. Um, and so around Christmas time, so three weeks in, uh, we started experimenting with co-streamers um, who would guide the audience through... Uh, the newest updates, they ended up reading and performing character dialogues and making their own impact on the game. And this ended up being uh, successful. At first, thousands were watching the, the live and they could cheer and coach the, the co-streamer, sort of like a traditional live broadcast. But quickly, the audience started joining in live. The, the audience, the co-streamer, the AI characters were all collaborating in real time in the shared simulation. And ultimately, we're deciding the fate of Rival Peak. And that became a nightly thing um, for audiences in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, time zone differences aside, it was difficult to catch that um, here in Europe.
And like all good developers, we listen to our users. We um, we got such a flood of requests for iPhone support that Facebook actually made it happen. So power to the people. Thanks for everybody who voted. Um, and there were other tweaks, like we added the map to show where the contestants are. We integrated links um, to rival speak um, right on the main page. We added additional types of mini games for the apes. Um, originally, it was just mat matching. Then we added match threes. So um, as always, we say keep the feedback coming because your participation matters. Um, Genvid is a pioneer in this space, and the part of my job that I enjoy the most is working with developers to design the concepts and the practicalities of, of game design to making miles. Um, answering the question of how can player-viewer interplay be done in a way that it's not game-breaking, but that it's fun and engaging for both parties. And this requires a lot of out-of-the-box thinking that game designers aren't usually used to thinking about. And we're here to help with that. I love cracking these design problems. Um, I'll, I'll say that we're highly uh, accessible. We are tech agnostic. We play nice with everybody. Um, so whether your target audience is core gamers on Twitch or casual players on Facebook, um, we've got you covered. We have native SDKs for Unity and Unreal. Um, and while we don't support other engines, we have projects that are successfully um, running and integrated on Godot, Lumberyard, and at least five different uh, custom engines. Um, key takeaways, uh, the audience watching live streams, uh, it's growing faster than the games market. Rival Peak has a potential audience of Facebook's 2 billion users. Native cloud streaming reduces friction. There's absolutely nothing for the user to download or install. Just jump right into the game. Um, and it's highly accessible because it works on low-end devices that are difficult to support. Um, with that, thank you very much. If anybody is interested in learning more, um, please reach out to me. I'll be very happy to run you through additional demos and, and projects that we have in the works. Um, and with that, I'll take questions. Um, thank you.